Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be going over transvaginal ultrasounds. So I just wanna do a little recap on what we're doing with our probe and what's happening on the screen simultaneously. So if I have my probe in sagittal, right, my notch is up, and I'm scanning a pelvic, right? So I look at my screen and this is what I see, okay? If I move my probe, if I move my probe up, we're getting more towards the fundus, right? This is where we started. This is me moving my probe up and coming back down. If I angle down with my probe, right? We're gonna be looking at the cervix. So again, this is where I start. And with, if my probe is in sagittal and I'm, the term is called seesaw, if I'm seesawing my probe upwards towards the fundus, and down towards the cervix, okay? That's what happens with our when we're manipulating our probe that way. If I'm in sagittal still, and I'm sweeping to the patient's right, that's what I'm gonna see on my screen, is to the right of the uterus. If I sweep to the left, I see the left of the uterus, okay? Now, if I turn my probe transverse, okay, my notch is towards the patient's right, towards me, if I seesaw my probe transverse, right, to the right and to the left. So we're not seeing superior and inferiorly, we're sweeping to the right and then to the left. If I move my probe up towards the fundus, down towards the cervix, okay? So just remember that when we're talking about the transvaginal portion. So now, So I'm gonna see if, now we do a Okay. And when you insert a transvaginal probe, you always wanna make sure, if the patient wants to insert it themselves, you always give them that option, right? So our probe, um, if you see that this bottom part is the handle and the top part is where the actual probe is, this is considered our notch. So this is sagittal and this is transverse, okay? Those are the only two views that we're gonna be dealing with, right? We might be a little oblique with a transvaginal just because the uterus and ovaries can be located in any direction. So, but for the most part, just like cookie cutter, right? We wanna say that the bottom piece is the handle. So that is not the notch. The notch is towards the probe. So it's at the top, okay? This one actually has like a little tiny um, little nick for your thumb to rest in. So that's where the notch is gonna be, right here. So the, again, this is sag, this is transverse. You wanna be able to give the patient the option to insert the probe themselves. However, if they want you to do it, you always make sure when you guide it in, you don't go straight in. You wanna make sure you angle down just a little bit and then ease straight in. This is gonna give the patient um, less uh, discomfort when it's inserted and you want to make sure that they're com as comfortable as possible. So now if I'm looking at my screen, my probe is in sag, okay? So again, just like the transabdominal probe, if I angle my probe up where if my probe, this means I'm pushing my handle down, right? The handle's going down, but the top of the probe is going up. If I lift my handle, the probe itself is going down. That's the seesaw maneuver, right? So if I push, if I am angling with the probe upwards, we're going to the fundus. And if we're angling down, we're going towards the cervix right here, okay? So now if I sweep with my probe, if I sweep left to right, so now this is the patient, again, it's gonna be the opposite. It's like a flashlight. So if I have my handle, if I bring my handle towards me, the probe is actually going to the patient's left. If I bring my handle away from me, the probe is going towards the patient's right. So you have to pay attention to laterality when you're doing this. So again, we're gonna do the same exact, we're gonna do the same exact protocol, transabdominally and transvaginally. So this is sag uterus. We take that picture and then we measure it, sag and AP. Then we do our endometrial
geometry of measurements. So for this one, I'm going to measure one side and then the other. So that's 0 0.36 plus 0 0.61, so that would be 0.9 or almost one centimeter. That's for endometrium. So now I'm gonna angle my probe. The, I'm pushing my probe away, my handle away from me, which means the, that I am angling to the patient's right. So I'm gonna take a couple of pictures to the right and keep sweeping, sweep. Sweep all the way out, make sure you look all the way out of the uterus. And then again, we're gonna come in, we're gonna pull this left. I'm pulling my handle of the probe towards myself, which means that I'm angling to the patient's left. And again, you wanna sweep all the way out. Now, since I'm here, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna, sometimes it helps if you take the probe out just a little bit, so if you're not, putting too much pressure. See, I'm kind of squishing the cervix. My probe is here, my cervix is here. So if I take it out just a little bit, you can see the end of that cervix a little bit better. So sad cervix. Now we're gonna go to, I'm gonna turn my probe. So here I'm in sag, and now here I'm in transverse. So this is going to be my transverse measurement. I'm gonna go all the way up. To that fundus. So how do I go all the way up to the fundus? I angle my probe upwards, which means I have to push the handle down. That's all the way up to the fundus. So I make sure I go all the way out. And now this is where my cornua come in, right? This is the, the very top, the widest portion of the uterus. So the uterus is measured from here to here. And we're gonna sweep down, take our slices and images throughout. So this phantom is just not gonna give us a great cervix picture, but picture transverse cervix to have a lot of shadowing here posteriorly and here posteriorly. Um, that's what you're going to see when, you, when you're at transverse cervix. So now if I am looking for ovaries, right? We're looking in our adnexa, whether it's the right or the left. I'm gonna look in the left for now. The easiest way to find ovaries is gonna be in transverse. Why? Because we cover more ground um, medial to lateral. So if I angle my probe to the patient's left, I'm gonna be in the adnexa and I want to make sure I sweep all the way up and then all the way down. So you can kind of see here, sometimes you can see it on patients as well, um, you see the broad ligament coming off of the uterus and it's attached to that ovary. So now I know that my probe is in transverse, right? So if I turn sagittal on this ovary and see how it cuts it and now the ovary looks like it's in transverse, I want you to document your organs based on organ orientation, not your probe orientation. So even though my probe is in sagittal, this is going to be transverse left ovary. We have to make sure that we're taking more than just one picture, right? We're sweeping through that ovary all the way, making sure that we're seeing the entire thing. I'm gonna measure it at its widest plane and transverse. I'm gonna put color on it. Obviously we're not gonna get real color because this is a phantom. And now I'm gonna turn my probe again. So my probe is in transverse, although my organ is in sagittal. And that's what we're looking for, is this true sag of the organ. So we're gonna measure it, make sure we take a couple views, sweep all the way out and all the way in. And we put color on it. We make sure that we again take our probe in transverse and we're sweeping all the way up and all the way down, we're looking in that adnexa. So our adnexa picture is gonna look different on a real live um, patient than it is right now on the phantom. But as long as we're in the adnexa, how we know we're in the, in the adnexa? Because we're gonna be lateral to the uterus and medial 
to the, um, the vessels. So you're going to see vessels here and your uterus here, your anexa is in between the two and that's where you wanna take your picture. So I'm gonna call this transverse left adnexa and then I'm gonna turn sag and that's gonna be left it next up. All right. And then you would repeat the same thing for the right ovary. So I would, again, it's like a flashlight. So where are you aiming the flashlight? My handle is going to go away from me, but the probe is coming towards the patient's right. So you would again, document the ovary, just like you, the right ovary, just like you would the left. And that is your, pro, your pelvic protocol.